Okay. Facciamo, facciamo adesso questo. Abbiamo finito un pochino presto. Facciamo adesso questo. We ended somewhat earlier than expected, so we can try and test with an experiment of ownership of what we're doing. That is to say, I'd like to ask you to tell us about what you would like to hear more about. You have already had a glimpse of what is being said. I mean, there is a lot more, of course, regarding the crisis, but it would be interesting to know from you what you would like to know from them, because they know so much, they're never going to be able to go through everything. So now we have two microphones. Please use them for asking questions. If you have questions, so you can ask a short question and the various speakers will take the floor to answer it. So you are the board of directors asking the consultants to tell you about what you're more interested in. Let's do it now rather than tomorrow because it might be too late. So grab ownership of what you are most interested in. Don't be ashamed. Walk towards the mic or let us know that you want a mic. Don't hesitate to either ask questions or put forward proposals. I'd like to thank you, but let me move on straight to the question. All Stati papers so far have been extremely interesting. Per darci un po di per il futuro, I think that for eh, us to be able to harbor any hope towards the future, eh, it darci could be interesting delle to hear per esempio, about che some possible Auerbach solutions. So, for example, what eh, Dr. Auerbach fine, said towards per, the per end, poter, I think that eh, to be able sarà lunga to fatigosa, wage this vedere un long and difficult Altrimenti battle, we have to have a demotiva, clear objective in mind, otherwise così. people might lose Credo their motivation, at least that's the case for me. I think it would be important uh, for you to speak about possible solutions. Okay, well, I uh, try to start with a, a, a solution. Um, as I said, one of the uh, difficulties, one of the difficulties that we have uh, is that I'm, is that this, there is a structural flaw at the heart of the European Monetary Union. The Germans, in particular, like to suggest that this is a problem of uh, fiscal profligacy. And that's not true at all. I mean, the, the large deficits you see in each of these countries is a function of poor economic growth. It is a symptom. It's not a cause. It's a bit like blaming the thermometer for recording a temperature when the patient has the flu. So what has to happen is that, first of all, people have to realize that it is only the European Central Bank at this juncture that creates euros. None of the individual countries can do it. And that places this particular onus on the European Central Bank, which it does not want to accept. The ECB continues to hide behind legalisms, saying they cannot do certain things because of the Treaty of Maastricht. But the Treaty of Maastricht is actually a very ambiguous treaty. They have ample authority to do what they want to do under the so-called financial stability clause. So it's very, very easy for them to take whatever measures they want. I uh, gave this proposal of a per capita income distribution. Uh, it's been argued that this would be uh, hyperinflationary. But in fact, it's not. Um, all that happens under this kind of situation is that the European Central Bank credits euros uh, and, and actually creates euros and then actually buys bonds in the secondary market. The subsequent cash is deposited back in the reserves of the European Central Bank. 
At this point, there's been no spending in the real economy, so there's nothing inflationary about it. So one can argue, well, what's the point? If it doesn't create any kind of uh, spending, then there's obviously no demand and we still have the same problem. But I would argue that there's uh, two distinct problems here which are conflated, but they are very distinct. There's a problem of uh, solvency and there's a problem of deficient aggregate demand. If you solve the first problem, the second one becomes much easier to solve. The government bonds are trading at very distressed levels right now because people perceive countries like Greece or Italy to be heading, facing looming national insolvency. And so therefore they are demanding a higher uh, interest rate, they, they charge a higher interest rate or they effectively shut them down, shut them off from the capital markets, as is the situation in Greece today. If the European Central Bank were to come in and effectively peg, say, uh, Italy's rate of interest at 4%, which they can do because they have unlimited capacity to create euros, then the solvency issue goes away. And once you address that solvency issue, it becomes much more possible for these countries to, say, issue bonds on the capital markets, which can then be used to fund uh, various growth initiatives. They can take many kinds of forms, green initiatives, uh, job guarantee programs we've discussed uh, amongst ourselves. But the point is, it's much easier to raise money when you are perceived to be a going concern. If you continue to starve the, uh, the patient by uh, demanding fiscal austerity in exchange for doing these things, and it won't work. The European Central Bank today is like someone who um, allows a, a person to recover in the hospital from an accident, and just when the person uh, gets better and gets off its bed, they come over and they break their legs and stick them back on the bed again and put in the intravenous drip. So they keep them in a position of perpetual impairment. And I'm trying to propose a way to help the patient get healthy again. Let's try and give short, short answers because we've seen lots of people on mm -hmm. here. Okay. Let's try and be quick to the answer. First, get mics that work. It's working. Uh, obviously, this varies by every country, and uh, I've been in Italy for 48 hours or something, I don't know, 57 hours. So I'm certainly not going to tell you how to do the organization. I can suggest ideas that have worked in other contexts and you can tell me whether they would likely work in Italy. So, for example, Berlusconi changed the laws so that accounting fraud is no longer a crime in Italy. That's indefensible. You could have a movement that would be concrete on that where the other side would have nothing useful to say, and it would be embarrassing if they tried. We call this the strategy of small wins. Find something small but important, win it, 
use it to attract attention and organization, go on to the next thing. Yes, uh, you see, let me uh, allow for a while uh, to defend uh, the European Central Bank and banks, because ultimately, who has created the UCB, who is imposing the European Central Bank policy, the states themselves. Even if the European Central Bank decided to finance state expenditures, the French government and the German government will say no. They absolutely are rejecting any kind of policy of saving the economy. Everybody knows that. First, the European Central Bank is a weak oligarchy of 17 central banks, de facto ruled by the French Central Bank and the German Central Bank. But everybody also knows that the central banks of France and Germany never do anything without the full advice, consent, and support of the new axis ruling Europe, Paris, Berlin. Thereby, it is exactly uh, the same uh, for banks. Governments from France and Germany imposed policies of destruction all over Europe. And now the economy is in such a state of disaster Yes, that we need an enormous increase in expenditures. So it is much more than a job guarantee program when the majority of the population is forever unemployed. So my solution is let us support any movement to get rid of the euro. There is no other way give back full monetary sovereignty to the states.
what you have suggested is exactly what the Wall Occupy Wall Street movement in the United States has suggested. There is a movement to take money out of the banks and to put them into credit unions. When we speak of a movement being created here, it's a movement to realize that the financial tragedy of our time is that the savings that you have are not being used to create new jobs or used to create new capital formation. They're lent out to get the rest of you in debt. This is a wrong use of savings. The more you save, the more the economy is in debt. And the more credit that banks create, the more the debt grows. So that all the banks create is debt without creating the means to pay it off. So hand in hand with getting an alternative banking system are two things. One, you need a popular pressure to define what a proper banking system would do if it were part of industrial capitalism as the whole 19th century set about theorizing. The other thing that you need is a tax system to go hand in hand with a financial reform to remove the tax deductibility of interest. And the final thing is what the mayor of London, Ken Livingston, has uh, proposed as a campaign slogan for uh, last week in England. Uh, throw the bankers in jail if they will not obey the law and if they will misuse uh, the credit system. So a three-pronged reform, and you have to do what Occupy Wall Street did and help popularize these ideas throughout the rest of Italy so that enormous conferences like this cannot be ignored any longer by the media and by the government. I shall answer very shortly to your uh, fascinating questions. Uh, first, uh, you are absolutely right. The very option of the United States of Europe had been rejected since the start. 
because those who intended to abolish the state at the nation level did not intend to create a state at the European level. Second, uh, about, as I said, the European Central Bank, it could be deemed the useless central bank. It doesn't control inflation. With a friend of mine uh, working in the US, we computed, as I said, the rate of inflation in France and Germany, which means the effective drop of purchasing power, and it is around 7%. So a central bank cannot control inflation. As for your last point, uh, yes, we reached a state of the society where the sole option is to leave the system. And, by the way, banks do not want to be reimbursed. It is a point I should address more. The French and the Germans created a system installing some kind of a e eternal debt uh, for uh, European people. What banks want is income. And if Italy uh, decided to leave the euro, the system would collapse. The real value of the euro is nothing. And it is a fact that France and Germany, and mainly the French, are afraid of this point. So you are entirely right. So this is clearly the question that you all have on your minds. And it is a very difficult one, I think, 
for all of us to grapple with. We don't have a good sense of what goes on in Italy and what your connections and options are. What we do know, I think, and what Paolo Barnard clearly understood is that there is power in getting information to you. And there is strength in numbers. So together with the information and the knowledge that you're gaining and the connections that you have with your organizations, your activist groups, your unions, you have to be able to stand together as a strong group that understands what the issues are and together says no. No more, we don't believe you, we know what's wrong, we know that austerity isn't going to fix the problem, we reject your policies, we see that we were better off before the euro, we know it's the monetary system that is crushing us. It's not working for us. This is not a true union. We don't treat one another as members of a unified Europe. And if you're not going to treat us as a member of a genuine union, we want out. Is it working? I, I remind you. If you, if you look back 15 years, Italy's debt level was exactly where it is today. Public, public. 120 percent of your GDP. Why did you not have a crisis? Okay, I hope that you can, at, by this point, you understand that you were not in a crisis then because you could always pay your debt. And you didn't have to go to the bond markets and do what they asked you and placate them and have them dictate your economic policies to you. You had your currency. They could not take advantage of you. They could not force you to sacrifice the way they can today. Same debt different currency. It is not the level of debt that has you in trouble today. It is the denomination of your debt. You have to make clear to everyone that you understand that you're not fooled and that you know the way out. Look around. I said yesterday you scare the bankers more than anything they've seen. Network. Get the word out to hundreds of your friends. Show them the pictures. Pick two or three issues that have broad support in your different organizations where you can create an effective coalition. Pick issues that will embarrass the hell out of the other side if they have to defend them. And pound the media relentlessly. Embarrass them for not covering you.
Michael. Uh, yes, uh, again, to be brief. Uh, first, I was told that this event uh, is uh, for the chair of the European Commission an abomination. And your Prime Minister was asked to prevent it. At least the luck for Italy is that you have a weak state while in France we have a very strong state. Uh, second point. Uh, I do think uh, that what is at what is at stake is to impose a change of politics. People accepting this learned audience are living in a world of lies, and you're absolutely right. The share of labor income, including pensions, in France, Germany, is at its lowest level since the interwar period or the Nazi period. In France, in the in the span of 20 years, the share of labor income collapsed by at least 30 or 40 percent. And yes, more and more people are committing suicide in France because of labor conditions. People who are still employed are living in uh, firms who are more and more acting as some kind of Soviet forced labor uh, concentration. Never have people been so productive. The productivity in France, Germany, is in Italy, is one of the highest in the world. But at the same time, real wages collapsed. And people are not aware of this scandal. Uh, Paolo spoke of the... Uh, or uh, my colleagues spoke of Occupy Wall Street relative to the shopping malls. But now, in, in most parts of France, the shopping malls are empty. A large part of the country is going back to some kind of middle age. An idem for Germany. And this is a scandal. We must uh, try uh, to make the people know the truth, to oblige the media to reveal the true situation. And bravo for your question.
No, you go ahead. Well, the uh, the simple answer is um, the same prediction. The same sort of predictions were made in Iceland, and Iceland, of course, didn't have to leave uh, a, 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 the euro. But their uh, response was, uh, "We're going to jail the, uh, the the crooked bankers. We're happy to uh, repay your debts, but it will be in our local currency." And if you don't like that, then tough luck. Fight us in the courts. <laughs> let, let me just add quickly, uh, it, Italy is not Greece. And I don't mean to disparage the, the, the Greeks by any stretch. But Italy is a great country. It makes a number of things that the rest of the world wants. I've got an Italian suit on today, Italian shirt, Italian shoes. You know, we buy things that you make. This is a vibrant country. It has been a vibrant country for thousands of years in different forms, and it can continue to be in the future. There's no reason why Italy's greatness has to be associated with a currency like the euro. I will. I would like to add to, that uh, Europe needs Italy more than Italy needs Europe. I would like to add. I would add that this is what you can say to those who say, what would happen if we left? Answer, what will happen if we stay? And I would add uh, to what Stephanie said, I don't understand in what way Italy could benefit for remaining into the euro. Uh, as I said this morning, capitalism in Europe is dead, mainly because of the euro system. The real economy is on the verge of a total collapse. So, uh, Euro is a parasite which have attained the brain, and it is a disaster than one of the greatest countries of the world, like Italy. The true country of reason and intelligence should suffer anymore from the fanatism and imbecility of rulers of the euro system. Can I add something? I will not interrupt questions, but I would like to say that uh, tonight after dinner we had uh, scheduled a round table with some topics, but uh, what we are seeing is something wonderful. So my proposal for tonight is the following. We really have to get as much use as we can out of these people here because they are here at your disposal, not the other way around. We've already said it three times just today. So uh, tonight, we Italians here bombarded day in, day out by the media uh, on TV with... Javazzi, Boeri, and uh, all these big wigs uh, uh, talking about the euro, saying, oh, the small Italy of uh, the 
Lira, with uh, Mr. Travaglio, etc. So this afternoon we are going to to listen to very important lectures. Uh, MMT will explain the functional finance to get out of this disaster, of this catastrophe. But during the afternoon, uh, start thinking about all of the objections that uh, uh, these media moguls uh, would shoot back at you, saying you are stupid, you don't understand the thing about the economy, that you are threatening uh, our uh, homeland. So let's group together all these questions tonight, and after dinner they will answer you, because we have to get out of here ready to answer to any objections. So go on with questions now, but this is what we're going to discuss after dinner. I will add one thing literally to the question you were asked. Vorrei aggiungere una cosa and alla domanda che è stata is, posta, cioè che that will depend on what la risposta dipenderà anche ciò da cui de da ciò che, che desideranno gli italiani, perché l'Italia riguadagnerà la sua sovranità e saranno gli italiani a fare questa decisione. And that is the Ed è questo gain in il guadagno, il vantaggio principale che ci aspetta. Io volevo fare una domanda molto tecnica, eh, nel senso in un'eventualità di un'uscita dall'Italia dall'euro, eh, come i professori pensano possa essere stabilito in un futuro un eventuale tasso di cambio della lira o comunque della divisa nazionale con le altre valute? Non la ritenete un'ipotesi abbastanza, non dico utopistica, ma eh, data la globalizzazione e l'economia aperta in cui ci troviamo, Uh, se insomma ciò porterebbe l'Italia a vivere in una situazione di completa autarchia e non lo reputano qualcosa di insomma irrazionale mi spiego l'Italia è un paese che importa ma che esporta anche non lo reputate non se è vero che naturalmente l'assenza di una sovranità nazionale con una moneta l'euro che non è una moneta sovrana come avete spiegato like euro, i suoi svantaggi però comunque i dati di fatto sono che l'Italia si trova in un sistema di economia aperta che è stretta comunque a, a dover tenere in conto delle altre realtà economiche internazionali come sarebbero gli eventuali rapporti e insomma volevo avere una, anche una spiegazione di quali, quali, quali sono eh, i parametri che potrebbero insomma, stabilire l'eventuale could be used uh, to establish uh, the exchange rate of the lira. Well, I think that uh, the true answer to your question is that everybody knows that the euro is grossly over and overvalued. It is, and the euro rate of exchange is maintained by a lot of artifacts, including permanent swaps with the Federal Reserve System, and now some effort of uh, France and Germany Uh, to get an inflow of dollars uh, from Saudi Arabia and even China. So, the real value of the euro is absolutely nothing. After all, Italy, like France, always survived and prospered in a global environment. Without the Euro, Italy uh, was a highly competitive country, as Marshall said. And so, if I could assure you that uh, Stephanie was right. The euro can survive only if Italy 
dit ça, tu remènes dans un système. All major banks in France and Germany are already uh, trying to compute the effect of the end of the euro system. It is a dying system. So uh, the effect could be a benefit for uh, Italy uh, if it retains its monetary sovereignty, reconstruct uh, the economy. Your, your question began, where should we fix our exchange rate? And I would say that if Italy did leave the Eurozone and go back to the Lira or introduce a completely new currency, it's very important that you float that currency. That is, that you do not try to fix the value of the Italian currency to anybody else's currency because you will end up, like I showed before, in the hierarchy, like Argentina or Russia, where you're now tying yourself to some other country's currency. You're no better off than you were before you left. So you float the currency and markets will decide what the exchange rate between the new currency and the euro is. And as Marshall pointed out, Italy produces wonderful goods and services that the rest of the world wants. I don't anticipate a problem creating sufficient external demand for the new currency. Let the currency float, run your domestic policy the way you want to run it, achieve your domestic macroeconomic goals, grow your economy, your currency will be strong. Buongiorno a tutti quanti. Allora, io voglio porre alcune, alcune questioni molto importanti. Innanzitutto mi sembra chiaro a tutti che il problema è la sovranità monetaria e l'euro. Ma mi sembra abbastanza chiaro a tutti che questi tecnocrati mediocri non ci ascoltano. Non ci ascoltano e se ne fregano di ascoltarci. Se ne fregano dell'imbarazzo, del metter, di sbattergli la verità in faccia. Se ne fregano. Noi, come popolo, siamo qui con uno scopo oggi. Informarci, conoscere e divulgare l'informazione. Però abbiamo bisogno di un qualcosa in più. Voi avete una conoscenza strutturale del sistema, molto più approfondita della nostra. Io se mi dovessi mettere a studiare quanto avete studiato voi, dovrei passare gli anni. E non lo possiamo fare nessuno di noi. Però voi ci potete essere d'aiuto. Ci dovete fare conoscere quali sono i punti di rottura di questo sistema. Perché questo sistema ha dei punti di rottura. Che sono di ordine legale, di ordine burocratico, di ordine strutturale, perché queste persone sono burocrati perché sono legati alla burocrazia. E dobbiamo cercare, oltre che con la comunicazione, di sfruttare tutte le vie. E voi dovete darci una mano con la conoscenza dei cavilli. Perché con i cavilli noi faremo opposizione vera. What is a technocrat? A technocrat is someone imposed by the bankers to replace democracy. When the Prime Minister of Greece, Papandro, said, let us have a referendum on whether the Greek population is willing to take on the debt and sell its property and have a referendum, Angela Merkel and Sarkozy said, no, you cannot have a referendum 
because a democracy will not vote the right way. We must have a technocrat to tell to deposit democracy. The good news about this is if a national debt is taken on without democratic approval, it is null and void under law and can be repudiated as an international debt. Fortunately for Greece, it doesn't have to repay a single euro because its debt was not submitted to a referendum. When Iceland uh, was told <laughs> to pay debt, when Iceland was told to pay debts that it did not legally owe to England, debts that it did not owe to Dutch banks for incompetent British and Dutch bank oversight, the pro-European, the pro-Euro Social Democrats and the Greens said, we want to pay anyway, we want to join Europe. They put it to a referendum, 92% of Icelanders voted against paying. They cannot throw out the current parties, although the, uh, public re the polls show the ruling uh, social democratic dictatorship has only 8% report. Uh, so the Icelanders are creating new parties. Four years ago, 80% of Icelanders wanted to join Europe. Today, a majority said, we do not want a Europe, we do not want a Euro. The European Union is not what we were promised. It's not a democracy, it's an oligarchy of bankers, and we are saying, no, uh, we are not going to join. That option is open to you. And I would add the worst is that the so-called Technocrats are not only uh, imposed by uh, bankers and the ruling oligarchy, but they are ignorant technocrats, totally ignorant of economics and absolutely indifferent to the fate of ordinary people. So, uh, as I told you, Europe now, because of the social euro system, is in some ancien regime situation. It is as though <coughs> Italy never had existed. So what we need is some kind of a cultural long march against the headquarters of the stupid oligarchy. We have a time concern, unfortunately, so please uh, uh, don't forget the questions you had uh, and uh, bear in mind what I said before, I'm going back home, uh, I'm going back to work with my colleagues, with my family. Uh, when they ask me uh, what was it about, uh, what, bearing in mind the, what the mainstream media say, unfortunately we have to break now, but we really do have to break now. Yes, of course. Unfortunately, the question was asked without using a mic. Whatever is made available to everybody. Okay, one last question after which we will have to go and keep the rest of the questions for tonight after dinner instead of the round table originally scheduled. Salve. Um, di recente ho letto un articolo sul quotidiano Energia che riportava uno studio fatto dal presidente della Siemens che ha proprio dichiarato della Siemens Germania che per effettuare l'uscita dall'energia atomica come tutta l'opinione pubblica tedesca vuole entro il 2030 sono necessari, i costi sono di 1200 miliardi di euro. 
Ora, eh, volevo chiedere, secondo voi, quando si parla comunque di cambiamento, di modifiche, so, eccetera, like non bisogna you, prima di tutto rivedere la pianificazione energetica, il nostro sistema che è interamente basato sui combustibili fossili, e anche a livello nazionale il fatto che dipendiamo dall'energia che viene dall'estero, in ogni caso. Uh, eh, ecco, questo è quanto, grazie. Yes, but it's not our department today uh, to go into this. The question would take over half an hour for each of us to answer. Uh, you're absolutely right, interesting question, but we need our energy for lunch, I think. Yes.